today if my parents for example come to my school bag and for example they find condoms one thing they it will come to them my kids is uh, my kid is immoral instead of uh, thinking that why is he having condoms and why uh, condom at this age you know what has he realized behind this condom they more so I think there is a lot of what I can say in a very bluntly manner there is a lot of also pretense and also there is that fear of uh, uh, opening to conversation having an open conversation like let's talk about sex let's talk about HIV let's talk about other STIs I think people need to break that barrier of communication lastly I think I'll say also uh, there, there was a time, there was a time, and this is uh, late 90s and even uh, early 2000, you, you will find that uh, the picture, that uh, the advertisement that were being done even in the, in the, in the media about people living with HIV, you, you will see a, a person very skinny, they, they have been uh, put in a post and then you are told, Jaribu uh, Ufe, you know, I don't know, uh, they, they bring the metaphor of electric power and all that. So I think based on that, I think that message of threat has really synced to the people, that people even fear talking about HIV, people even fear talking about uh, just their own status. And I, 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 I agree with my, my colleagues, it's not very, it's not easy yeah. taking a pill every day. You can even uh, test when you are being tested for malaria, severe malaria, and this you appeal to take, you ask, ah, will I take this for a whole week? Now you can imagine taking that pill every day consistently for you to achieve what we call the viral suppression. It's not easy. So I think even as we package the message, I think we've come at a point whereby right now we have a lot of ways of packaging the message, a lot of um, uh, prevention measures have come across, and, and and I really agree with, with Lucy that uh, the message most of the time is for the people who live with HIV. But sometimes also we are told you are HIV positive until you are tested negative. So it is even a challenge to all of us because there is some sort of complacency, yeah. you know, and that language is still there, you know, amekanyaga waya, amekanakalia deposit. You see, such words wow. even make people even feel accessing uh, 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 treatment yeah. and uh, it's it, it, it's simple like you test you treat yeah. you know but how many people are, are willing to to accept the result because it's a simple thing today if a lady goes for a clinic for example they are pregnant they are they have gone for a clinic and they are told you know what for you to continue with your clinic you must test HIV. You know, yeah. that testing of HIV has become, has been proportioned to be a very big deal. Yeah. So I think people need to come at a, a point whereby we neutralize how we give out our messages. Okay. We neutralize how do we talk to people whenever they disclose their status. Yeah. How do we treat them? How do we ensure that they have that proper environment? Even infrastructure. Trevor, yeah. I will tell you, like uh, you go to most of our public facility, they have a, a space where they've uh, set aside is known as CCC. Yeah. So, for example, if I'm going there, Trevor, and I'm going to meet even my re if my relatives work there, and I'm going <laughs> when I go there, people say, ah, these are for that area. You are there from the room of the CCC. You are the one. So, I think we need also to review our infrastructure. Our infrastructure also need to encourage people to access the, the, the medication in case someone turns positive. Okay. However, we need also to elevate yeah. the prevention measures. The prevention aspect need to be really elevated. All right.